Now let's take a look at the space traffic of the week and see what's coming up next week in spaceflight. Starting off the week on July 13th, we had a Falcon 9 launch from Florida. Its nine Merlin engines ignited at 5.04 UTC to lift the Israeli Dror-1 communication satellite into space. The satellite was built by Israel Aerospace Industries and is also described as a smartphone in space that is expected to provide communication services for military and civilian purposes for 15 years. SpaceX used Booster 1083 for this mission, which flew for the 13th time and ended its mission by successfully landing on the drone ship Just Read the Instructions. Over in China, a Chongzheng 7 lifted off from Wenchang, carrying a cargo resupply mission to the Tiang Space Station. The 9th Tianzhou spacecraft lifted off on July 14th at 2134 Universal Time and arrived at Tiangong about three hours later, bringing 6.5 tons of supplies. Among the delivered cargo are science experiments, two new and improved EVA suits to be used on future spacewalks, and one new exercise machine. Tianzhou also carried 1.5 tons of food, increasing the station's menu to over 190 choices. It seems the Chinese astronauts won't have to complain about the food anytime soon. From Tiangong, we go to the International Space Station, which saw the departure of the Axiom 4 crew on July 14th. After saying their goodbyes to the station's Expedition 73 crew, the four astronauts boarded Crew Dragon Grace, ready for their return to Earth. During their two-week stay on the station, they worked on over 60 science experiments and studies. This was the fifth space mission for Commander Peggy Whitson, and the first for her three crew members, Pilot Shubanshu Shukla of India, Mission Specialist Swawosz Uznański Wisniewski of Poland, and Tibor Kapu of Hungary. The three first-time flyers were the first to fly to space for their respective countries since the 1970s and 80s. Crew Dragon Grace undocked from the zenith or space-facing port of the Harmony module at 11.15 UTC. Just over 22 hours later, Grace splashed down in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California, marking the end of a successful mission. Speaking of California, a Falcon 9 lifted off from Vandenberg on July 16th. Encapsulated in the rocket's fairing were 26 Starlink V2 mini satellites to be added to the internet constellation. The booster for this mission was B-1093, which successfully ended its fourth mission after softly touching down on the deck of the drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. SpaceX has now launched a total of 9,213 Starlink satellites, of which 1,222 have returned to Earth, and 6,938 are currently in their operational orbit. Just a few hours later, SpaceX launched another batch of internet satellites from Florida, but this launch wasn't for Starlink. It was SpaceX's first launch for Kuiper, Amazon's Starlink competitor. So why is SpaceX helping out the competition? Well, Amazon didn't originally want to launch on Falcon 9, but its shareholders essentially forced it to buy some launches from the world's most prolific launch provider. Plus, SpaceX has been launching internet satellites for other companies for years, so it's really nothing new. We made a whole video about it earlier this week. Check it out if you're interested in the full story. It's a good one. Lifting off from Space Launch Complex 40 at 6.30 Universal on July 16th, Falcon 9 carried 24 Kuiper satellites into orbit. This was the first flight for Booster 1096, which successfully landed on the drone ship a shortfall of Gravitas. For some reason, Amazon is still secretive about showing the satellites and their deployment, so we didn't get any second stage views. But weirdly, they did release an image of the payload adapter after all the satellites were deployed. The mission brought the total number of Kuiper satellites launched to 80. This includes the two demo satellites launched in 2023, which have since re-entered. Going into next week, it looks like we'll have four Falcon 9 missions, two from Vandenberg, and two from Cape Canaveral. One of the missions from Vandenberg will launch NASA's Tandem Reconnection and Cusp Electrodynamics Reconnaissance Satellite, or TRACERS for short. These two satellites will study the Earth's magnetic field and how it interacts with the solar wind. Ultimately, this should help NASA and scientists better understand how space weather affects our planet. One of the Falcon 9 missions from the Cape will launch a pair of communication satellites to medium Earth orbit for the O3b M-Power constellation. The other two Falcon 9 missions scheduled for the week are Starlink missions, but you probably guessed that already. Finally, there's a Soyuz launch scheduled from Vostokny. This one will lift the final two satellites into orbit for the Ionosphera M constellation of four. These will study Earth's ionosphere and magnetosphere from sun synchronous orbit. And that's everything planned for next week. As always, schedules might change, so keep your eyes on our next spaceflight app and website for all the latest updates. I'm Soy Rosenstein for NSF, and that's your weekly space traffic report.